In this video, I'm going to go over the 2017 Science PAT with this one just going over all the questions from matter and chemical change, also known as chemistry. All right, so let's take a look at question number 11 here. So what we need to do is they've given um, four different tests, point, um, microscope, and then we're mixing it with what looks like some, some type of acid. Now we need to decide with this test, which one is looking at chemical property. So again, this is one of those times where you need to know your terminology. If you are unsure of your terms in the description below, I do have a unit package that goes through all the terms and concepts that you're responsible for knowing for matter and chemical change. It's only going to be available for just a little bit, um, free anyway right now. So I would download that and then start trying to make sure you understand the concepts. With these ones, again, what you might want to do is take the concept cards, put them next to each other and try and distinguish the differences and similarities between them. So in this case, really, we're probably going to focus on the differences. So we're looking at chemical property and we can contrast that with physical property. So when we're talking about physical properties of a substance, we're thinking what it feels like, what it looks like, um, what its characteristics are as a compound on its own. So um, what temperature does it melt? What temperature does it boil? Any of those things. When we're thinking of a chemical property, we're thinking, how does it chemically react? So when I mix it with something, what does it do when it gets mixed with something? All right, so with that being said, let's take a look at our options here. So when we're looking at density, well, you're just looking at the density of the compound or of the element, excuse me. So in this case here with density, it's really just gonna be its density point. It's either super runny or it's not, depending on the substance. Its melting point, well, I just mentioned that earlier, that's gonna be a physical property. It's um, crystalline structure observed. That's what it looks like on its own. It's not reacting with anything, so that's definitely gonna be a physical property. That leaves us with the last one. We're mixing the compound with an acid. And you don't need to know that it's an acid, but what you do need to know is that heat is generated. That is evidence of a chemical change. That means when we put the two substances together, it chemically changed, it became a different substance. So that's gonna tell us that test D is definitely gonna be measuring for a chemical property. Okay, uh, what we need to do here is decide which of these compounds are um, an element, or sorry, which of these classifications of matter are an element, a compound, a solution, or a mechanical mixture. So um, when I'm thinking of what these terms are, an element, I really just think of it as its most simple form. And I'm sure some of you know, like there's protons, neutrons, electrons in an element, but it's still pretty much in its simplest form in comparison to everything else in this classification of matter. Um, a compound is going to be two or more substances. And it's really most of the time gonna be two elements that are coming together. A solution is a compound or an element, but it's gonna be in liquid. So that's gonna be the key difference there. Now a mechanical mixture, really that's gonna be two or more substances that are mixing together. Hopefully you all remember that from grade eight. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and look at the examples and decide where they fit. So in our um, examples, the first thing we have is acid rain. We've got chocolate chip cookies. We've got um, helium gas and then table salt. So let's think about what this is gonna mean here. So acid rain is going to be a form of a solution. The only one that I have that's gonna fit that solution is going to be three. Chocolate chip cookies, um, I'm thinking about the two differences between them, it's not an element, it's made up of two or more substances, so it could be a compound. So we can come back to that one. Helium gas, that's like what I fill up in um, in, uh, in balloons for birthdays. Helium gas, that on its own really tells me it's one element, so it's gonna be in its most simplest form. That one's definitely gonna be a one. Table salt, so table salt is one that is a common compound as grade nines you are supposed to know. So table salt is made up of two different things. It's made up of sodium and chloride. So that one is definitely gonna be a compound, leaving us with the chocolate chips being our mechanical mixture. Okay, number 12. So number 12 has some reactions or some definitions that we need to be clear that we know what they mean. 
So corrosion, really that's gonna be rusting. Exothermic, think exit. So in this one, energy is exiting the system, so it's releasing a lot of heat. And combustion, well, combustions are the fun ones, they're basically explosions. So both of those are gonna be releasing a lot of energy. And then endothermic is the opposite. So endothermic, um, exothermic is exiting energy, endothermic is taking in energy. So if something is taking in energy, it's going to feel cold. It's absorbing all of the energy around it. So what that means for this then is we're looking at our different substances here. Really what's happening is we're starting off at about 15 degrees Celsius and then we're reducing our temperature, right? And that time span is pretty short that it's reducing. So options A through C, well, rusting, I mean, I mean, rusting happens, sometimes temperature dependent, but it's not gonna happen within 30 seconds. So it's not gonna be A. And option B and C are both giving off energy, meaning that their temperature should increase, not decrease. And that only leaves us with D, so it's an endothermic reaction. It's taking in energy from its surroundings and it's going to appear to be cold. Okay, number 13. So yes, this is the time in your life where math and science like to come together. So with number 13, um, it looks a little daunting, but I'll explain it like this. So what we're doing is we've got 12 grams of solid carbon and we're reacting it with O2 and we form um, a certain amount of carbon dioxide gas. So I'm gonna write it like this. So our reactants, our ingredients are C plus O2. And then unlike math, we don't write an equal sign, we write an arrow, um, makes carbon dioxide. So we know we use 12 grams of our carbon. We need to figure out how many grams of oxygen are reacting. So I'm just gonna draw a box there representing that gram. That's gonna combine to make um, it was a total of 44, oops. it was a total of 44 grams of CO2 produced. So if you're looking at this, we're basically saying 12 plus some number equals 44. So the way I can solve that is I can take away 12 from both sides. And then that's going to give me the amount of oxygen that was reacted, which is 32. Okay, so it's gonna be 32 for this one, so our answer is going to be B. Okay, number 14. So number, in in um, in grade nine, you they will give you a periodic table. You are responsible for knowing roughly about the first 20 elements, but there are trends and aspects of the periodic table you do need to know. So one of the aspects of the periodic table that I wanna show you is this staircase here. So what this staircase does and it actually kind of looks like this, but it's more or less where these gray lines are. I'm just looking at my original periodic table to make sure it looks good. Uh, yeah, it's gonna go down like this. So that line really divides our non-metals and our metals. So that means anything on this portion of the periodic table will be our metals, and anything here would be our non-metals. That's important to recognize. Um, the other thing that's important to recognize is as we move across the periodic table, as we go this way, um, reactivity tends to decrease, okay? And part of the reason for that is these ones here, this group here, group 18, these are our noble gases. And basically they are so stable. They're like you all, or I guess most of you, I shouldn't combine you all together, but they're like most teenagers on Saturday morning or probably what most of you guys are gonna be like, probably what most of you all are gonna be like in the summer, like just stable, just, just kind of hanging out, lying in bed, doing whatever it is, recovering from these PATs, you're not moving. Same thing with um, the elements in group 18. They do not wanna react. In fact, if they react, it's just a very momentary thing. And then they like, they give up and they go back to their stable state. That's how stable they are. So that's something to consider. Um, the other thing to consider is that these elements here in group one, they are highly reactive with water. 
Um, when I was teaching in the UK, like we got to put some lithium and sodium inside some water and it's pretty cool how quickly it reacts quite violently, even just a tiny piece with water. So um, just some trends to think about as we go forward. If this is confusing to you in the description down below, I do have, um, I'll show it to you. I do have this version of the periodic table in there. So you all can take a look at that and use that while you're studying. Okay, so what we have to decide here in this question is we have to decide which element would be closely related to using copper as a substitute. So one of the things I didn't mention is the way the periodic table is organized is all the elements um, that are grouped together are actually, they have similar properties, okay? So if we're looking at this part of the periodic table. The first thing I'm gonna check is that all of these are metals, which they are, they're underneath that staircase, so they're all metals. But we're looking for copper. So copper is this one here, it's Cu. I need elements that are gonna be really close to copper in order to use them as a substitute. So the only ones that kind of fit that description are these three here. Except for the fact that when we look at mercury, there's a couple problems with mercury. A, mercury is liquid at room temperature. So it's not gonna make a good solid uh, coin. So it's liquid. And then the second thing is mercury is highly poisonous. Um, it does a lot of bad things to the brain. So we probably don't wanna use that either. That leaves us with our only option um, as being a good substitute for mercury is gonna be AG or silver. Okay, number 16. So we are looking at um, washing soda. I'm assuming this is like clothing soda, but it could be wrong. So really this is asking you, like I said, you need to know the first 20 elements of the periodic table like as best as you can. So a lot of students do think when they're looking at Na that it's um, a certain compound. So if you haven't already, um, maybe take a peek at the periodic table I've got in the description or look at your own and take a look at what Na actually is. Yeah, so Na is sodium, which means I can cross off A and B right away. So that takes care of that. Then we need to know what um, the C is. Well, C is either gonna be based on our options here, it's either gonna be carbon or calcium. So if I'm looking at the periodic table, carbon is element number six. That's the only one that starts with a C on its own, meaning that it can't be calcium. So then we'll just verify our last one. Our last one is oxygen, but we know it can't be D, so our answer for this one is gonna be C. All right, number 17. So with number 17, we've got um, a couple of things happening here. They've given us our key of what hydrogen is and what oxygen is. And that's pretty accurate. Hydrogen is relatively really small in comparison to oxygen. And they wanna know what's gonna represent water. So the molecular formula for water is H2O. So that means we need two hydrogens. So I'm looking at all of these ones. We need two of those little H's. And that one does not have it. These ones aren't even touching. So that wouldn't even be a compound. Um, this one only has one, so the only option I really have is D. The other one that I think is uh, kind of a cute way to remember this is water kind of looks like Mickey Mouse. So if you ever are stuck on that one, it kind of looks like Mickey Mouse there with the ears and the head. Okay, number 18, we need to decide which of these compounds are ionic. So ionic, basic, ionic, not basically, ionic means we are looking at a metal and a non-metal. That's different than um, uh, molecular compounds, which are just made up of non-metal. So remember that staircase part that we talked about with a metal and a non-metal, you're gonna be looking at elements that are on opposite sides of that staircase. So um, let's look at this one here. So the only ones that I see that are immediately made out of metals are those two. The rest are non-metals and you can always verify that on the periodic table there. Um, then we gotta decide we need another non-metal. So the only option, these two are the same. Those are made up of metals and non-metals. Then we have these two here. So nitrogen and oxygen, they're above that staircase, which means they're gonna be non-metals making them molecular. So our only option that we've got left here is C. Okay, number 19. So this one is basically assessing your ability to write or determine what a chemical equation is. So a chemical equation is like a math equation. So basically you're taking two things, could be more than two things, but we'll go with two, 
you're adding them together and you're getting a product. That product or the equal sign is represented by the arrow and the product is what the equation equals. So I'm gonna read this out loud and then I want you to think about what is going into this experiment. What are we adding together or what are our ingredients? In a science class, students saw a copper precipitate. Copper solid, that's what that little S means, it just means a solid. Copper solid appear in a solution of copper sulfate. Copper sulfate aqueous, that just means it's in solution, after a piece of zinc solid was added to the solution. Okay, so let's have a think about this. Copper solid appeared. So if the copper is appearing, that means we didn't have it before, but it started to form at the end of the experiment. So that means anything with copper um, at the end of the arrow is gonna be an option. So we can definitely cross off this one here because the other three have copper as a solid. Now, um, the next thing we need to think about is we said after a zinc a piece of zinc was added to the solution. That means zinc is going to be our ingredient. We're adding it into the system and then we got our copper. So that means we can cross off A. So that's gonna leave us between these two options here. So now we gotta decide what was happening to this copper sulfate solution, okay? That copper sulfate solution, well, it's let's, let's read this again. Copper solid appears in a solution of copper sulfate. So that means our other ingredient was our copper sulfate. So that's gonna leave us here with option D. Okay, number 20, our women's symbol. So I, I, I'm so sorry about this one, but there's, there's really no other way around this. You do have to memorize it. Every PAT I've seen has at least one women's symbol question. Um, yeah, you just gotta memorize it, Google it, do some flashcards. Um, if I find an activity uh, in the link, after I film this, I'll pop it in there for you to practice. So um, this symbol I recognize really well. It's always at the doctor's office for when you get um, blood drawn or at the lab when you get blood drawn or um, any sort of injection here. It's called, it's basically, um, it is biohazardous. And what that means is once the um, samples have been taken, once the instrument's been used on a person, you don't want it mixing with another person. So it goes into a special waste container. It's often a yellow waste container and then everything gets incinerated. So if there's any diseases or any other issues, it's not gonna affect anybody. All right, so that is it for this video on matter and chemical change. I am gonna do the entire PAT, so stay tuned for those to pop up. In the meantime, good luck studying, and I will see you all in the next one.